Hello everyone, I'm Julie. Welcome to my craft room tour. This has been a long time in the making. I have done some major cleanup in this room. I'm gonna show you my tips and tricks on how to stay organized in a small craft room. Let's get to it. Welcome to my crafty space. Let's start right here at the bottom of the stairs because this is a basement scrapbooking room. I have a washroom right here. I always leave my broom out because I'm always making crafty messes. And the first thing you will notice is this is an open concept room. And that can be a problem at times, especially when I'm trying to do process videos. So this is the condition of my craft room in current state. It is messy. I have things hanging out everywhere. I really do feel like I have outgrown this space, but this is the space that I have and I'm going to have to make it work. So I'm panning around the room here to give you an appreciation of how small it is, but it is still my crafty space. So this is where I do all of my filming, right here in the corner. And here at the top, well, that's a hot mess. There's a whole bunch of stuff hanging around at the top. My Calyx unit here is not used really, really well. So I think it's time to make some changes. So this is where I use the scrapbook all the time. I have a light underneath the Calyx unit. And I have my little bin system here where I used to drop everything in there. And for the most part, it was working just fine. Except when I started making process videos. My table surface is simply not deep enough for me to hang a camera over top. So I moved to this corner here of my scrapbooking room. I don't really have room for those large studio lights, but I'm making it work. Now, if I pan here and I look to the outside of my room, this is a hallway, and that's where I keep all of my stamps. And currently, there's projects, there's paper, there's stamps. There's a whole bunch of stuff right there. And here on the left-hand side, I have a Calyx unit. I am limited to what I can put down here at the bottom because I'm in a basement and I'm always afraid that I could get water damage on some of my projects. Here I have a shelf system in back of me and right now this too is a hot mess. I really have to clean this out and I think that I can make this work but right now it's just a whole lot of messy things and I just need to put a little bit of order into it. So let's look here in the back and this here is a really good space. Now in those two cupboards right there I have a water meter so I can't really shove anything in there. I still do but I shouldn't and for whatever reason all of these drawers right here are full of plastic bags. I'm really not using this space properly so I'm going to have to change that as well. So right at the top here in these cupboards are where I keep all of my dies. They're all separated in binders and I really like the system. This is probably the only thing that I like in my scrapbooking room currently. I have all of my slimline dies. They're tucked away inside the doors on both sides here and this works really, really well. But as for the rest of my room, it's not working anymore. I have way too much stuff. I really have to address this corner right here. I do all of my videos in that corner and I drop things on both sides of my desk. Yes, I have a large desk, but I don't have a good system to keep my projects organized because I'm always working on one or two projects. So I did try these trays from the work place wonder system and they do fit inside of the calyx unit but because I'm only five foot two I kind of lose track of what's on top I don't really see so I'm gonna have to find a better way to store my projects I'm gonna pan one more time out into the open where I have a lot of my stamps all the way in that back corner and here I have for the most part photos in boxes, albums, and more embellishments. 
so I definitely need to do a major cleanup. All right, let's take a look at the clean room. And I have to say I've purged probably 40% of what was in this room originally. Again, this is an open concept room. It is approximately eight by 10 and it is an L-shaped room. So I had to work with what I have. And like you, I've been watching tons of videos and trying to figure out how people set up their space. So first thing, you have to set up the space that you have. So we're gonna start right back here because those cupboards up there were probably the best solution in this room and I've kept them the way that they were. I've separated things into stations and I'm gonna walk you through them now. So this is where I do all of my die cutting and I've got my slimline dies inside the doors on both sides and then here I have all of my dies separated into these really handy little binders. Let me reach out for one here. In these binders, I have them set up in page protectors. These are four by six. And for the most part, this system works really well for me when I have to teach a class or do a crop. I can just grab my handy little book and I can take it with me wherever I go. Now, since I started this system, Close to My Heart has come out with these really nice pockets or envelopes if you want, and they're nice and sturdy. And I've been gradually moving to these ones right here. In this cupboard right here, originally, I had a variety of things and I've kept some of my nine by nine albums right up here. The plan is to do projects in those. And then here I have this, I call it my throwaway bin. So when I'm doing projects and I wanna clean up really, really quickly, I just throw things inside this little bin and then I put it away. Sometimes we have to clean up a little fast and I'm allowing myself to have a little place to put things away. And honestly, it's worked out during the cleanup because I knew to go look in that bin if I misplaced something. I was not using this space to its full potential. So this is another station where I have all of my stationary, like just white paper, my refills for my cartridges. I have all of my tape, my pens. This is another uh, little stand that I use when I do some videos. And I basically turn these little drawers into kind of like stationary stuff, envelope stuff that I don't need to get to every day. In here, because I don't have a closet, this is where I keep my little props when I take photos. It was very narrow. And again, I don't need to get to this stuff all the time, so I've tucked it away in back of me. If we pan to the other side, this is where I do most of my crafting. So I brought everything closer to me, stuff that I need to use all the time. This is my Calyx unit right here, and it is really good. They do have really cool inserts that help you store your stuff but I'll show you where there's some limitations. So tip one in reorganizing your craft room is corral all like items. And this is what I did right here. These are fridge bins and they are great. What I did in these little bins is I put all of my wood shapes. And what I liked about these bins is that the actual package that these came into fit perfectly so I didn't have to label anything I could just go ahead and put those in in this one right here I have all of my acrylics and again the bags themselves with the label with the name fit directly in this bin in this bin right here I have all of my bling 
And again, it fits in the original package. So I thought that that was really, really neat. And now they are all together close to me when I'm scrapbooking and I can just reach up for them. Now for my blending tools, I, like most of you, <laughs> my collection grew. So I had to change my system and I will link that video that I did previously where I only had a few. I still don't have a whole lot. I went up to a larger size bag. So this is a three by four and I'm able to drop my little applicator in here. And yes, they are all labeled by name. I can tuck in my tools right at the back and I even have room to grow. That is such a nice feeling to have. Now in this last cubby here, I have these older cropper hoppers. And in order to fit them in a Kalex unit, you actually have to cut them down by a quarter of an inch. Otherwise, they don't fit. So I have a bin here for current papers that I use. I have a bin for workshops that I'm working on. And here is where I keep all of my completed layouts that need to be transferred into a, an album. This is right above where I work all the time and I can reach up and grab things like my Versamats. And yes, I have a couple of them. And again, it's quick, it's easy, and it's right above me. Now this system right here is the last thing that I have to address. I don't think it works for me anymore. I would rather change it up, but for the purpose of this tour, I left it as is, and I need to revisit this area right here. Let's move to the area where I do most of my creating. I create all of my online classes right here and all of my process videos. Now you can see that I don't really have space to hang those big studio lights. So I've gone to these system right here and they're not the best. They're not as bright as the studio lights, but this is what I can fit in this corner when I do my videos. Now if I pan here, I have my laptop that's tucked away underneath, and then I've got a larger screen where I do all my video editing. This area right here is a little bit of home decor. So basically, when I hung these pictures up and these picture frames, they were empty. And I actually liked the fact that they were empty because the possibility was endless. But I also found a few of my favorite flowers that I've created over the years, and I think I'm gonna start adding them right inside these frames right here. So I think that that's gonna be a nice project to see the evolution of how I fill up those little empty spots. Okay, so here we have two Billy bookcases, and I highly recommend two as opposed to one. The reason why is that they're actually more sturdy, especially if you're putting really heavy things on them. I have a Billy bookcase right here. This is a 36 inch wide one and it's starting to bow in the center. This here is still 36, but it's separated into two. I was able to add little doors at the bottom. Let's talk about labeling for a minute because I found that when I started to label some of my containers, it became clear to me that I had to get rid of things and if I didn't have a label on it, I didn't have room for it. It just had to go. So in here, I have all my Cricut vinyl. I have all of my adhesive in here. I have all of my little travel cases in here, all of my electronics and the ones up top, if there's no label, it's because they're empty. And again, that's a really, really nice feeling. Now let's take a look inside here. So inside of these drawers, I have all of my spare envelopes. They're separated by slimline, three by three, six by six, five by seven. I've got some twine and jute. I have a few embellishment bins right here. Those are just larger packaged items that I just couldn't open up at the moment. And then here I've got chipboards and of course a whole bunch of paper or cardstock to do cards and then just random binders. 
So now we move into kind of the hallway where my open concept room actually works. And this is where I store all of my stamps and all of my projects. Now I've got this really nice tower right here where I have some stamps and then I've got these little bins where I have stamps again. And again, I labeled everything. And if I didn't have a label for it, it just had to go. So from here, I've got everything that is calendar or winter, floral, fall, summer, Valentine's, alphabet and months of the year stamps. And um, that system seems to work. I just pair them together and they have to fit in those bins. If they don't fit in those bins, I have to say goodbye to them, believe it or not. Here I've got a wedding album that I want to work on. I've got some vacation albums that I want to work on. I've got my December daily bin, a couple of Disney albums, baby albums, and Christmas cards. So this is all back here. And then in here, this is where I have all of my stamp set. And you'll notice that all of the labels are pretty much the same. This is just on copy paper. I just printed those on copy paper. I kept the same fonts. And for these ones right here, they were printed on cardstock. And I added a little black frame just to dress them up a little bit. This definitely can be removed. It's not as permanent. These ones here are vinyl. I can remove vinyl, but it's not as easy. So I did want to give myself the opportunity to change these up because if anything, stamps are the one thing that will change the most in your scrapbooking room or in your card making room. In this space right here, I really only have space for a three by four calyx unit. So I really had to be mindful when I was cleaning this up to keep only the essentials of what I needed to keep. Down at the bottom, I have different things, but they are not paper related. It's more like storage containers. In here, I have these little drawers where I keep all of my ribbon. So I have quite a bit of it, but I have pared down. These ones here are just kind of held by gravity. I've got my washi tape. Up here, anything that is watercolor, watercolor pencil related is in this drawer. Down here, look at that, I've got room to grow. All of my paintbrushes, spatulas. And here is where I keep all of my spray bottles which I don't have a whole lot. These are the glossy sprays. This is where I keep them all. And then I have all of my shimmer brushes and all of my water brushes. If we start right here at the top, you'll notice that the switch to turn on the lights is inside my cubby. So I'm kind of sacrificing some space right here, but I do have some new albums. I have an eight and a half by 11 album here that I'm going to start doing projects with it very soon. This is a project that is on the go, so it's okay, but I did have to kind of sacrifice a little bit of that cube to fit this unit in the space that I have. Down here, I have a few albums. I don't want to put them at the bottom. Here I have, and this is going to be definitely a follow-up video. Here I have the close to my heart photo bin and if you see right there I have a stack of photo boxes that are all going to be sorted and placed inside this bin and labeled so that makes it easier to pull photos out. Here is my bin of completed Christmas cards so I do like that these fit on top of each other. Up here I kind of condensed everything into these units and I I've been waiting forever and a day to get these dividers for the Calyx unit. And to be honest with you, I think I want to change this system. And you'll see why when you watch Aaron's video. So right here, I have all of my glitter paper and they've all been labeled and they're all up here in bags. 
And yes, I keep all of my cardstock in bags because when I go to crops, it just makes it easier for me to pull the bag and take it along with me. And also I find that it protects them. So it definitely does not look as pretty, but it's a system that works for me. So I've got all of the colors here, all of the glitter paper here, and down here is where I keep all of my neutrals and my page protectors. Okay, so let's take it nice and close and where I work. So remember at the beginning I said to you that I was creating stations? So definitely here my Workspace Wonder is all in front of me and when I'm creating I have everything at my fingertips. I even stacked up a few of those trays. So here I have completed layouts. This is a project that I'm working on. Everything is in front of me and I can just reach up and grab it. I've got my tools at the top. I've got my reinkers. All of my inks are in front of me. I've got my little blender brushes here and this this is my low tech system for all of my branding strip. It's just a vase that I bought at the dollar store. I keep it in front of me. Um, they don't get damaged. They kind of curl up a little bit, but they don't get damaged for the most part. And I tuck it right here so that I can see it and I can think about it. So I'm not sure how you store your branding strip, but that's how I store mine. The addition to my room were these Alex drawers and I really do like them. I was able to put a ton of stuff in here. So you see here I've got all of my acrylic blocks, I have my tools, I have all of my adhesive in the first drawer because this is the one that I reach for the most. The second one here I've got washi tape and I've got my specialty pens right here all sorts of tools that I reach for a lot and these are all extra little Cricut cuts or dies that I've created along and they were randomly placed everywhere. I think I'm gonna have to do a few cards and use some of these up but I really do like that I can see them now and again they're close to me. In here is where I keep all of my sequins. I did label them all. And you know what? I thought I didn't have any erasers. Well, when you corral like items, you will find out that you have tons of these things scattered around in your room. Now, this here is the Alex drawer with a file system. Because at the time that I was cleaning up, I wasn't able to find the five drawer system. I bought this and I wasn't sure how I was going to use it and I wasn't 100% happy and you know what? It turned out great. In here, I've placed all of my scrap paper. So again, these are those large envelopes from close to my heart. I have all of my whites, my black, my grays, my browns, and this is it as far as keeping scraps. These are just fun foam pieces. Again, close at reach so that I can actually think of using them, but they do fit right inside this larger drawer right here. And uh, I find that really, really helpful. In here, I have again my Cricut tools because my Cricut machine is right up here. This drawer here I have all of my metal embellishments. These are all Halloween embellishments, more embellishments here. These all used to live inside of those doors and they took up a lot of room. I actually pared down quite a bit, but now they're nice and close. And basically what I did is I placed everything inside three by three little bags and I put like items together and I really like that they're all tucked away in one single drawer. That's actually really, really nice. In here, I brought closer to myself because they used to be in that cupboard right there, but I brought this closer to me. All things embossing from embossing powders to embossing pads, even my heat tool is in here. Everything again, nice and close and put away. This one here is where I keep all of my completed cards. So I have tons of completed cards here. 
And if it gets more than that, then I know that it's time to send some happy mail. Underneath my desk, which previously you can even look underneath my desk, I have my sewing machine, my little sewing kit. I call that my bug out bag. <laughs> when I go to crops, it's already packed, ready to go with the essentials. And then this is a bin full of retired cardstock. I've got my little electronic system down here and yes, a heater because it's a basement studio and it does get cold. I'm gonna do the best that I can to film this area. As I told you, this is an L-shaped room and I'm pressed against my desk right here and I'm trying to give you a visual. This is my craft box like system. And it kind of acts like a craft box, but it is like a fraction of the cost. This here is a Billy bookcase. It is 15 inches wide. These here on each side are CD or DVD holders. Unfortunately, they are no longer available, but you can see that it's got the same look and feel. And this was less than $500. I really like this system. And I'm a person that actually needs to see what I have. So I need to see little things or I need a label. And it took me a while to figure that out. So here at the bottom, I have all of my retired ink pads and re-inkers, and they are all stored upright so that I can actually see the colors that I have. I rotate out the current ones into this bin, and when this bin is full, I actually rotate everything out. And that's a system that works really well. So let's talk about paper for a second. Now, I used to have paper here, over there, on top here, on the back here, on the top. I corralled all of my papers and I made labels. And I have to tell you that by making a label, it really helped me to pare down on my papers and separate them out by by season or by type. So down here I have Christmas, Halloween, kids, specialty. I'm gonna skip through this one here. I have neutral, outdoor, floral, and summer. Now, if it doesn't fit in one of these categories, I either have to use it right away or I have to get rid of it. So this is also going to help me with my future purchases. Now, if I go here in the center, here I've got tucked away all of my stickles containers and they're facing down. I like that system quite a bit. I keep here all of my six by six pocket plus. All of this is tucked away in here. So those are page protectors. In here I have my watercolor paper and specialty papers. And in here I have a longer type of sticker sheet. Let me show you some of them. So things like this that are long and narrow, I kind of tuck them in here. Again, close by right in back of me so I can use them. Now, if I go up here, I've got room for my stamps. I haven't labeled my bins yet because I'm not sure if I want to do that. And here, believe it or not, I have one extra bin, which should probably be labeled with current. And this is the one that I take when I go to a craft room. Now you can see that I'm not that tall. I'm only five foot two and this is right at the top, but it works. So if we go down here from the bottom, I haven't been able to let go of some of my punches. So I do keep them here at the bottom. And again, they're in a clear container so I can see them easily. Here's where I keep all of my placeholder mats. I think that this is a really good system. Again, right in back of me so I can reach them. And then these bins here, again, I don't need to label them. I can see what's in here. I have my foam tape. I have my tape runners. This is where I keep all of my flip flops. And look at that. I even have room to grow. 
If we go here on the other side, same thing. I have room to grow. Here I have my foam tools. I have all of my different black inks, all of my stickles and my paint. Again, more foam and shaker windows in this one here. And lastly, some of my older punches that I just kept for now. I hope that you found a few helpful tips here today to help you with your craft room reset. I know that I've watched tons and tons of craft room tours and they definitely helped me for this one here. If I can leave you with one last thing, don't forget to corral like items and then create stations. That really did help and don't be afraid to stick a label on it that will also create limits and help you keep your favorite products in your crafty space. Well, that's it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this tour and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now. If you want to see all of the Creative Design Team's craft room tours video, click on the link on the right hand side.